Well, it wasn't a clear plan. And, 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 and you know, to be honest, I didn't even finish school at that time. Uh, you know, I was interested in, in light and sound equipment uh, as a hobby. And, and basically, uh, if, if you file it a business, then you can get the equipment uh, at a dealer price. So basically, I filed it as a, as a business uh, to get a better, better price on my speakers and uh, uh, light equipment. So that was the reason, very simple. I would say that was a pretty important milestone. Uh, I would say the, the artist intercom system has really brought us into the international business. Before that, I've done a little bit of export, but really artist intercom has uh, put us on the map in, in the industry. And uh, we got into countries, uh, well, I was never visiting before. You know, Formula One even happened uh, before the artist system, to be honest. Um, you know, um, I was in Lillehammer at the Olympics and uh, I did a radio interview uh, with Radio Wuppertal, a very small private race radio station at that time. Um, and of course, I was extremely proud to be at the Olympics. So um, I was telling that and we did uh, the radio and, and some intercom. That was not artists at that time. That was basically the very first uh, uh, metrics intercom I developed. Um, and. Uh, while I, I'm talking on the radio, someone involved in Formula One passed the autobahn here uh, and basically listened to that radio. And, uh, and he just felt that, uh, who the heck is Thomas Riedel? That's the story how I ended up in motorsports. You know, it's funny, uh, you, you're right. At, at the same time, there's, uh, uh, there's a couple of these things over the years which just did happen. I mean, uh, just recently on an interview, I, I made a comment uh, about, well, the next thing I really want to do is I want to want to be involved in a moon mission. And well, obviously, someone someone read that, and and now the next thing to come next year is we are involved in a moon mission. Basically, because of uh, going to the stratosphere with our technology, doing not only the communications and audio, but also the professional video, which uh, a billion of people uh, saw. Basically, uh, that was the reason why the journalists asked me, well, what's coming next? You already went to the stratosphere. And, and I just answered, well, I want to go to the moon. And, and now, now we have that project. No. Uh, you know? We did many things and, and we have had fun and, uh, uh, and certainly we have achieved a lot. But, uh, you know, I would say the thing I'm most proud of is my, my largest archive of 30 years of mistakes. Uh, because, you know, you only learn if you make mistakes. And, uh, and, and the good thing is we made lots of mistakes so we could learn a lot. Thank goodness most of the mistakes we only did ma once. Yeah, we're getting close to 500 now uh, and uh, companies still growing. Just recently we had uh, a meeting in our core management team and, and we all believe the company has the potential to double again in the next five. So let's see what happens. Well, we are not one of the biggest employers in town. I mean, Wuppertal has quite, quite a number of big, big companies, very much under, underestimated typically. However, I was born here and I'm, I'm a proud, proud guy living in Wuppertal and, and being born here. Absolutely. You know, first of all, the whole thing has started with rentals. And well, that was basically my original start of the business was light and sound equipment and then it got into the radios. So basically that's how the rental business has started. Over the years, we benefited a lot from the rentals because rentals typically brought the requirements for the new products. So basically, uh, a project comes up, you have a need, and then you develop uh, towards that need. And that's how a new product typically is developed or was developed, let's say, in the, in the earlier stage. In the meantime, we still benefit from the fact that we can pioneer new technologies. So we can basically bring new technologies into, into rental projects. And typically, these, these are very high profile projects. So you, you get nice marketing for the product, but you also uh, get gain experience. So that's all pretty good. 
And, and I would say the rental business benefits as well because, you know, a rental business which always gets latest technology and also can get that in quantities because the same company is the manufacturer, that, that's pretty positive. Well, the acquisitions of DELEC and ASL uh, have been very important to us. First of all, both companies were very respected companies uh, already in the, in the space of intercom. And, you know, if you are on a growth path and if you are on a very, very quick growth path, then the, the, the major challenge is finding people. And that's exactly what we did find with, with both companies, excellent engineers in the Netherlands as well as here in Germany with the, with the Dela guys. And it was really coincidence that we did make a decision in our management team to hire another 10 engineers for R&D. And only a couple of weeks later, the opportunity of Dela came up. And guess what? It's about 10 engineers uh, which, which used to work at Dela. I think we are, but I think it's, it's, it's really different if you compare that for artists, for instance. When we launched artists to the market, artists as, a t as uh, basically with the, with the topology in intercom we introduced, like nodes within a fiber network, this was a brand new approach. This didn't exist and it took people, I would say, three to five years to really pick on that concept. So it was not like everyone was excited straight away, but people were confused. What is this about? Why do I need, why do I need nodes in, in a network? Why should I place these nodes in different parts of a building? So basically decentralization, building networks, which is a given these days, and everyone does that. We've been way, way ahead of time at, with, with introduction of artists, which was pretty hard, I, ha I have to say, because I expected, because I strongly believed in that idea, I've expected that everyone must, must really jump on this now when we come to the market, and it didn't happen. You know, we got good sales and that was fine and probably more sales would have, would have caused different problems in growth. However, I was kind of disappointed in the beginning and I learned that if you are too much ahead of time, it's also a problem. With the Bolero system, it's a different story. I think we are not ahead of time here, even so the product is ahead of everything in the market in my mind. But I wasn't happy about wireless products in the market, including our own products for quite a while. Uh, and I said, you know, we need to do something which really covers the whole market. All products in the market would only cover a certain, a certain part, a certain segment. It's like this product can do um, outside broadcast and being in rental business. This product can be for fixed installations. And, uh, you know, there you had different products and there's, there was nothing being universal, nothing which really solved the frequency uh, issues in the market, nothing which really solved the quality, the low latency, and also the intelligence you, you wish for in, 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 in the field of intercom. And I had several discussions with my team saying that, no, no, we're not developing a new system. I'm waiting for the right idea. And if we have that idea and, that, and, and basically the, the path to the technology, then we do it. And it's about three years ago now that basically we came to the conclusion that, yeah, now we have it. And basically it was uh, this technology which we call the, the ADR, which is the Advanced Decked Receiver. You should know that in Decked there is a big issue with reflections. And that, that problem makes basically all decked intercom systems unusable in very large uh, buildings. So if you have buildings with lots of uh, metal inside, and especially if you go to like a football arena, then very likely the system will not work at all or have a very poor uh, performance. And that is something I said, how can you sell this to a, to a rental company and today it works, tomorrow they go to the stadium and it doesn't work anymore. I can't do that. And to be honest, my own product uh, was, the old product, the, the Acrobat, had that disadvantage. So we always said, well, go to a venue, test it. If it works, install it and, and it will work fine. If it doesn't, I can't help. I mean, that's not a product. And I wasn't too proud about that. Um, so we looked for a solution and um, then on the research level, we got to the point that, well, there is a potential solution here, 
but we need to analyze whether this really works. And we, we spent quite some money on, on basically a research program and we simulated in software whether this idea would work. And that was something which even happened prior to the whole start of the development of Bolero. And when that simulation, uh, basically the result of the simulation said, yes, this looks really like it works, that was basically the moment of excitement when I said, now let's do the right product. Because the foundation is that technology. Uh, we have done more things around, which probably takes us too far here. But basically the foundation in RF, it was a fundamental key. And then we went further looking at, well, how can we do the right intelligence? How can we do the right industrial design for the product that users really feel that this is a nice device, it's the use is very intuitive. And uh, you know, the result is Bolero, and we believe uh, the market has been waiting for Bolero a uh, for a while. And just in the sales numbers, we can already see that we are not uh, basically a ahead of the time, but we are behind. Thank goodness we are still, with that product, uh, the best in the market. So we get the deals. So that's very good for us. Well, probably also the mistakes uh, were important. Because if you don't make the mistakes, uh, you can't learn. I mean, obviously, if, if, you, if you do something again with the same brain, the same memory, then hopefully you do different mistakes, <laughs> you know, not the same ones again. However, uh, you know, I, I'm still very passionate about what we do. I'm very glad that my, my parents let me, let me start this and that I got all the support from, from family, from basically also the early clients. And I would say probably most of the things I would do just in the same way. And I'm very grateful for, for the whole history, how, how things happened to me, I, I have to say. Uh, I mean, staying a ho ahead of the competition is a very important thing, obviously, in the business. But I think it also comes as a natural thing if, if you have such a passionate team and you have a good group of engineers, everyone aims for the best. And, and that's why you, and, and it, uh, it's no matter where you look at, you can, it, it starts in product management, then you have the engineering team, you have salespeople, you have service and support people, and in all these teams, we, tr we really try to have the right spirit and aiming for the best. And if you keep going, then in my mind, uh, uh, it's just a given that you stay ahead of the game. Uh, I mean, obviously, our competition is doing also a good job and we respect our competitors a lot uh, and we watch them closely. But, you know, like in a real race, if, if you watch your competitors and you do a good job yourself, well, you have a very good chance to, to win the race. We aim for the best products. We want to really have a product which does the job uh, uh, best in class. Um, and uh, if we talk about iconi iconic venues, typically this is an iconic venue because there's people there which whatever they do there, singing, dancing, performing, uh, uh, producing TV programs, they are the best in class in, in, in their field. And you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm doing a job, I want to have the best tools. So. If I'm playing an instrument, I want to have the best instrument uh, as, as the best musician. And uh, from that point of view, in my mind, uh, it is a logical match here. Uh, at the same time, your supplier should be close to you because, you know, things, as we know, don't always go perfect. So, so there might be issues. And, and, and that's the moment when, when you want to have your partner pretty close. That's, by the way, also the moment when you really learn whether your partner is a good one.